to err is human. For this reason, we've made mistakes as we conquered frontiers. And with skies beckoning, we tried and tried to fly, but physics wasn't on our side. Then with a little bit of hot air, we finally beat gravity and powered right into the wild blue yonder. And it wasn't long before we slipped into the First World War. Amazingly, more people were killed by poor decisions and sloppy training than machine guns and dogfights. But with lessons learned, we blitzed our way through into the Second World War, and aviation began to streamline. More power, more dials, more speed, but sadly, a lot more stress. So we introduced science, and the first rudimentary simulators started to trick reality. Then finally, the dust settled, and bombs were replaced by bums, and we soared passengers into the jet age. Pilots went from heroic risk-takers to wearing gold bars and wrangling with computers. And the airlines grew and grew. But so did the human factors. And they came thick and fast. And after several tragedies in the 70s, safety refocused on communication and teamwork. And in the 90s, we really started to look at the whole picture. Not just at work and second jobs, but at home and in play. So now we recognize that human error can occur anywhere, anytime, in any system. So as we build our knowledge of human behavior, we'll continue to boldly go where we've never been before. Each facet of human factors is interwoven with the other. If an organization doesn't invest in safety, it's impossible for people to be safe. Aviation is often held up as the paragon of new technology and, and the future already here. And yet, it's only people, it's only the human who can hold together this complex shifting patchwork of technologies, of communication requirements, of pressures and goal conflicts. It's only the human who can do that. If we don't understand the human factor, we don't understand safety in aviation at all. Good safety culture. Supported by management is the foundation, so people feel empowered and part of the bigger picture. Like all things, it's about enabling people so everyone contributes from the bottom up with good reporting, action and feedback. I don't own safety. The chief pilot doesn't own safety. Anyone you see in our facilities must own safety. Otherwise, you'll never get a generative safety culture. So in this series, we'll look at several aviation organisations across Australia. We'll get a direct insight into how they manage their safety and human factors. Aviation is inherently a risky business. Inherently, we work in a high-risk environment. And part of that risk is putting young and enthusiastic people in expensive machines with passengers behind them. I think it's really making sure that they feel respected within the group and they're part of the group and that they can feel comfortable at any time asking questions and feel that they're not going to be persecuted or feel foolish because of it. We spend a lot of time and a lot of money into our staff training, but it's, it's a cost of doing business. It's a very important aspect of our business. And to complete the picture, we'll be gathering the thoughts of industry experts. We see aeroplanes crashing because very basic parameters like airspeed and attitude are not being monitored at critical phases of the flight. And often that last link in the chain has actually become the asset and rescued that situation. Really the big difference in aviation is the consequences of those errors. Welcome to a deep dive into the high-flying world of safety behaviours, human factors for pilots. I implore people to invest in researching and understanding human factors. It will help you not just in your piloting career, but also your personal and corporate life.